All right, we can call this meeting to order, 6.30, November 13th, 2009, select board meeting. Can kick it right off with the consent agenda. We have two warrants, AP2019 and AP2019DPW. But I'll say so moved. No, we still have more. Oh, okay. A bunch of one-day liquor licenses. More one-day liquor <laughs> licenses. Finish off the season. Um, top of the campus, men's basketball, Mullen Center, arena floor, court club, all alcohol, four, one eight of 20, one eighteen of 20, 125 of 20, 129 of 20, 29 of 2020, 215 of 2020, 218, 226, and 37, all of 2020. Then we have one day liquor licenses, top of the campus, men's basketball, Mullen Center, concourse concessions, wine and malt only. We have 18, 118, 125, 129 of 2020. Then we have 29, 215, 218, 226 and 37 all of 2020 then one day liquor license top of the campus women's basketball mullen center concourse concessions wine and malt only 111 115 122 129 all of 2020 28 212 222 and 229 of 2020 then one day liquor license top of the campus for hockey games in the Mullen Center concourse concessions, wine and malt only, 111, 124, 131 of 2020, 27, 222, 229, and 35 of 2020. Then a one day liquor license, top of the campus, hockey games, Mullen Center, behind goalie pond club, all alcohol, 111, 2020, 124, 2020. 131 2020 then 27 222 229 and 35 all 2020 may I have a motion so moved second all those in uh, any further discussion all those in favor aye. 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 aye then we have our public comment period don't know if anyone is here tonight for public comment but welcome to take three minutes for public comment Okay, moving on, I would say since, since Eric is here and we don't have a time, we're going to do our tax classification hearing at 645. Um, maybe we can review the proposal for Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Uh, Eric Weiss is here from PVPC uh, to discuss the program. I don't know, Eric, if you want to introduce us for the program. Thank you for coming. Absolutely. Um, I, I met previously with some of the people in this room. Um, I know that... Um, the town was using Bay State, or is using Bay State, and Bay State has decided to close um, for their own reasons. Um, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission three years ago put together a regional accounting program service in which we hired Eric Kinsher from Kinsher and Associates, Eric Kinsher and Associates, to do the to do the accounting. That program has been very successful to date. In fact, Hadley was in the original bid that we put out three years ago. I wasn't in this position. That was when Josh Garcia was in this position. Um, so we have some familiarity with Hadley in terms of the numbers and your $20 million budget. And there was some information that went back and forth between the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and the town of Hadley at that time. At, once that bid came in, you guys chose to go in a different direction. And that, that, that leads us to today where you're now faced with the challenge of what to do when Bay State closes its doors and what are you going to do. The discussion that was had a couple weeks back was all about can we pro can we help to provide that service to the town of Hadley? The short answer is yes. On my head, David, send this around. Did everybody get this electronically, or do you want me to hand it out? I made some copies. If you want to hand it out, I'm happy to. <coughs> copies. You let me know what you want me to do. I've got it. You're all good. Yeah. All right. So I'm, the first thing I wanted to do is go over that that um, flyer or that piece of information in terms of the program information. Um, we're trying to offer this program to as many municipalities as we can. Right now, Goshen, Chesterfield, Blanford, the town of Brookfield, and the town of Monterey are all using the program. Um, 
when we reach outside of the re the district served by the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, which have, which doesn't account for heavy, we seek permissions from the other regional planning agencies to do that. So that's why we can include Brookfield and Monterey because they don't offer similar programs in those regions. So what we have is a, is a unique program, very similar to what you did with Bay State, whereby the person comes to the town of Hadley, they're employed by Kinsher, if they're not employed by the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission or the town of Hadley, it's done on a consultant basis. They come in or they do most of their work, they do the majority of their work remotely. Then that's um, their, their process. We created this program three years ago because there was a significant need amongst communities um, to have this, have this to put that out there. As I said, we, we hired Eric Kinsher. Um, the bottom line here is that, as I explained when I was here last, we understand that this um, is a critical need of a community. It is a complicated need. It is not a role, a role that somebody can just easily step into to understand the ins and outs of municipal accounting and what's required by the state and tax forms and what needs to be filed when and certifying free cash and all the other pieces that go with it. It's not the way it used to be 20 or 30 or 40 years ago. It is a, it's a different animal now that has to be done right and the town's financial well-being is dependent on doing this process right. So we tried to find somebody who could do a good job, and we've gotten nothing but rave reviews back from having Eric Kinsher do the work for the communities that we work with. I manage the program, and my job is Regional Municipal Services Manager. Um, and that means I check up with the towns directly, and I check in with Eric Kinsher directly, and that those don't cross. I check in separately to make sure that I'm getting accurate feedback information from both parties that are involved. How are the services going? Are your needs being met? Are they being responsive? There's, a, there's an annual questionnaire that goes to the towns, but I check in with the towns regularly anyway. Um, if you wanted to interview or con con talk to any of the towns that use it, I would highly recommend you talk to um, Chesterfield or Blanford. Um, those are two people that are, um, one happens to be Josh Garcia who was in this job. He's now the town administrator up in Blanford, so yeah. He helped create the program. Of course, he's going to speak well of it, but on the other hand, it is. Blanford was in a bit of a muddle when they brought in Kinsher, and that's all been straightened out. Um, the town of Brookfield was in a, to say it lightly, was in, in a bit of a pickle, um, and he helped straighten that town out. Um, and then Chesterfield, you can talk to Sue Labrie up there, widely respected, knows her stuff, and she had nothing but good things to say. So I know that the town is worried about timelines in terms of when the services could start and everything else. Um, I have had conversations with Eric Kinsherf about that. He has actually reached out already to the person who is doing your accounting work for you to see if they can make a deal. I don't know the answer to that, but I know he's reached out to them already. He is thinking that they could, he would have to hire somebody to add Hadley to his group of towns that he serves. Um, and he serves towns throughout the Commonwealth, some under the contract with us and some outside that contract with us. Um, <coughs> He would have to staff up. He's hoping that he can get some of the staff that is out there from Bay State, but that's a negotiation he has to take on for his own business because it means if he brings somebody on, he's got to have enough work for them to do. Um, but he is very interested. His timeline is, is February, March, in terms of what he could provide full service to you. I know that leaves you in a bit of a bind between what do you do between, say, December 1st and March 1st. Um, and that's, that's a challenge for the town, and I get that. We don't have somebody we can just throw your way. I actually got a call from another town today saying, you have somebody who can fill in for three months, and that's not the way this program works. Unfortunately, it's somebody we bring them under, under contract. Um, I, I had some, I sent some questions to Eric um, Kinsherf. It's always difficult for him and I to talk because it's Eric and Eric, but to Eric Kinsherf, I go by Eric W. to make it work. Um, and he was saying somewhere in the seventy to $75,000 range per year, assuming everything is up to snuff. He was saying for any extra work outside the contract that we put together, if there's things that need to be done, he generally, he would bill that at $130 per hour. He's saying he would be available come March. What I did before, between the last time that I was in Hadley and today, is I also sent you a copy of a draft of a contract in which I left out dates and numbers um, that goes through the details, which I'm happy to go through what I would do is tell you that the critical area, I mean, the critical area you're worried about is what it's going to cost, and I gave you a range on that, what we could set up timelines on. Um, the other piece is that if you looked at the, if you have a version of that contract in front of you, the key responsibilities between the town and Eric Kinsherf are spelled out in the appendix. 
the, the front section is all <laughs> what has to be in place. This is fully bid, so to come on with us, you, you don't have to go back at the bid, you don't have to do anything. It's bid by us on, on the town's behalf that use it. So that we've covered bid law. The scope and timeline and everything is covered there. Our fees are 4.5% of whatever Kinsher charges. That's just, we don't make any money on this program. It pays, pays for my time and our business manager's time to keep track of everything. That there's no, we're just making sure our, we get washed hands in this in terms of the service we provide to the towns. Um, I can step into the um, appendix if you would like. It goes over general areas of responsibility. Um, the, for us, for us, we have all the management and contract administration. I have, the, I have reached the point now where I do everything electronically with the town, so the bills and invoices all go back and forth electronically. Um, I know that you've worked with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission on other programs in other places, so the arrangements would be common um, to that. Um, the rules for the rules, the, um, the role of the consultant is spelled out in the second section. They'll act as the town accountant. They'll prepare warrants and examine bills, record <coughs> receipts, maintain detailed records, prepare a Schedule A report. I'm just basically going down the list of 1 through 22 here. Annual reconciliations, mandatory uh, quarterly reconciliations, annual reconciliation, mon monthly budget reports, budget for town meeting, working with the other town departments, collaboration with the assessor, town clerk, and, uh, and other town employees as needed. Um, Customized reports for town town administrators. We went over the program that he's familiar with the program that you have in place. I think it's Vadar. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So they're very familiar with working with that. So there's no training training up that has to be there. Um, the numbers that you would need to get through to, to the annual town meeting. It always has that great clause of other duties as required in terms of what we need, what may or may not be needed in certain times. And then the, the second page of the appendix to me is also very important because it lists what they're expecting, that your F-2019 books will be closed, free cash will be certified, Schedule A is complete and submitted and approved by the DLS, your 2019 audit is complete, and that um, in terms of any previous years that things are up to date. If they're not, that's where some of the extra fees might come in because they have to kind of catch back up on something and something has to be put back in line which wasn't completed. And I'm not saying Bay State did or didn't do anything wrong, but there may be things that are left undone. I don't know that at this point. They don't know. So the way that he would um, come to the town is he would come and there'd be a negotiation back and forth and he has a pretty rigorous questionnaire that he would go through that asks a whole series of questions about the status of current things so that he can come up with the best guess as to where things are. Some of that is actual transferring information from Bay State files to his files, etc. cetera, um, if that's able to be done at the time. The second section of that is the plan of services to the town. Um, in which it lists how many on-site visits per year there would be, what they're doing off-site and remotely, the warrant processing process. Um, and we went back and forth in Monterey on the negotiation on how that would occur so everybody was in the loop the way they want. Every town does warrant processing just slightly different in terms of which hands it touches and wh what processes it goes through to have that submitted. He's more than willing to work with your town to make sure that works. So in summary, um, it's a good program. I was happy to inherit it and happy to work with the towns and happy to be able to offer it to towns in both Hampshire and Hamden counties. That is the service region of the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. I know we could do you guys well in this program if it's what you choose to do to met, to have your accounting services operated in that way. I know we're providing a quality or um, company that is well vetted at this point in time and is in this for the long game. He left sort of the private sector, left town accounting to put himself in this business. He's looking for new towns to work with. He's looking for organizations like us to make the sort of layer where he doesn't have to be completely involved at the town level, that some of that can be pushed aside. Um, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission is very much looking to work with towns in Hampshire County, obviously with the change in status of the Hampshire Council of Governments. Um, so, and I know that's old news in Hadley, but I just want to make sure that you're aware. And I, I have worked regionally and municipally for over 30 years, and I would be happy to help be the go-between on this process and get this project up and running for Hadley. Thank you. David, you had a question or comment? So the, uh, Linda and I were talking about the, the gap between uh, December 27th and uh, February or March. And I think the solution that we've come up with is Joan Zusko, who used to be the assistant accountant, can do enough to keep us together. Do you want to amplify on that? Um, and that was one of our options. We had we have a few things that we talked about. With one is that she certainly uh, is uh, 
able and willing to step in all of the things working out. As you know, she's moving over to HR and all, but she did have her, her initial uh, hiring in Hadley was as assistant accountant. As she knows Vedar uh, about as well, I mean, really as well as anyone in town. Sure. And um, sh we think that her cont her picking it up would be a, um, a, a, a quicker um, getting up to speed than if we get someone outside in who doesn't perhaps know the vendors in our own our, our system as well and who who are who the various people are in town that you're dealing with it's just for a, a, a short period of time and the other thought that we had is if we're able to keep um, with one of the staff people if there was a uh, a continuation of some Bay State staff with the, with a new company that we could we might be able to work with um, our continue with our connection there with our person who's been coming in each week and, and like I said, have you her continue and bridge that gap until she's actually yeah. you know in some way and you sent me contact information I reached out to Eric and he reached out to mm -hmm. I don't remember her name but um, uh, Mary, so, yeah, Mary. Mary. So hopefully yeah. that will work out. I don't have an answer for so, you today. I mean, so if she was able to do that, that would mean that Jane, Joan wouldn't be able to. But rather than get a new person in, I know we've gotten some names, but for two months, um, we think it would be a, a, a quicker and easier transition if we work with what we have, even though it's not going to be easy. But we think it is probably, on balance, one of the easiest ways to get there from here. Would she be able to um, do the audit and the other items that are mentioned there in order to close uh, out those items? Or? The, Who does your uh, No, uh, Melanson no. Heath. We're hoping okay. that we are going to get through that. She doesn't do, she hasn't had the background in the audit pieces. She thinks that she can help pick up with free cash if that's necessary. But again, we're hoping we will be able to get through that. Since we do have until December, and we've got Justin and Mary coming out for the day tomorrow, and to both be here on okay. site for the day so that we can hash all these remaining items out um, but no going through the audit is not something that she'd be careful uh, she'd be com that comfortable with on the other hand I don't know who else would be so it really is easiest I think if we can work our way with um, with Bay State to continue on that Bay and, State. <coughs> yeah Bay State yeah. But, um, also in terms of the audit process if it's somebody that you've used before and they have familiarity with town that's in your benefit mm -hmm. as you move forward with this we do yeah, yeah. yeah. right can I make a motion that we um, use Joan to as our fill-in accountant if needed for the interim period between PDPC or whoever we go with in the March time period and when uh, our current account contract ends? Just that way we know what direction we're going in and that way we can kind of move that way. I wonder, did we need to do that tonight? Because I don't think she was aware that this was going to happen oh. tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I think Guess we're a little what? ahead of ourselves. Okay. So I hate but to do I that. I'll draw that motion. <laughs> <laughs> I was all second that she's not here. <laughs> you weren't in the room, you were named. <laughs> right. yeah. So, what, so what would be most helpful, I think, at this point would be if the board would uh, give us a direction to go so that Linda and I can sit down with Eric and Eric and work out the details of, of making that their contract work for Hadley. I would I would prefer to have um, Joan be the bridge um, instead of using somebody from the other company. I just say let's just dissolve ourselves from that other company and yeah. move have forward. Joan, Joan do what she can. To Correct help train until Pioneer Valley Planning can uh, come on board full time and awesome. and do that. I just don't want leftovers. Well, the thought choice was that. It would be a continuation, but if she is going to get hired by the new company, that would be a natural transition. Oh, right. Right. So yeah. I mean, so it's not just who who is available. It's a matter of continuing with the same person, people that our department, same person, Mary, that our department has are already working with uh, every month. So it's, like, so is that the option? That we that don't she might, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. That when so, I said yeah. I reached, well, maybe it wasn't clear enough. When I said I reached out to Eric Kinship, it was here's the person. She's obviously going to be out of a job. Are you interested in trying to hire her? He reached out to her, and I don't know where their conversations are at. Okay. But he's thinking yeah. since she's already trained in Massachusetts accounting principles, and she's obviously, or maybe looking for a job, that there might be a way to make this fit. Okay, I didn't realize it was yeah, going yeah. to be her. There was another layer to that. Okay, so, yeah. right, all right. So, that's between a those two. So well, hopefully mm -hmm. by, by your next meeting we'll have worked that through. But I, I'd like to involve them. Mm -hmm. So what what is the um, what is the price? We don't know. I, that's what I, I was going to say. Can we make a motion that we 
allow David and Linda to negotiate a contract with PVPC to come up with the municipal accounting service for for us to continue. Yeah, I, I will say in, in response to that that the way that we just set it up with Monterey is there was because it was partway through the year and so with this mm -hmm. is there was a price per month set out and then you multiplied that by 12 so it was whatever number of dollars per month and that's to be negotiated right now we're saying 70 to 75 per year and you can do the math by dividing by 12 but again it's also understanding the status of different things in the town to understand what's, where you're what's at. your year oh, the same fiscal, fiscal. year the fiscal year it's July one fiscal year. okay yeah, yeah. yeah. So was that your motion? That was my motion. I second that. Any further discussion? No. The signs? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I thank you on behalf of the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. It's good to be of service to the town of Hadley, and I hope we can work out a, a good arrangement that, that suits, meets everybody's needs. Yeah. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Very much. Yeah. Thanks for coming tonight too yeah, and explaining absolutely. it all to us. Absolutely. I got to get out of Boston at 3 o'clock, so I was happy. <laughs> <laughs> when you wait time, too long yeah. to get out of Boston, you sometimes don't get out of Boston. Yeah, yeah. True. Okay, we can... Um, Are we good? We're good. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. No, 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 you're good. <laughs> okay, thank you. We can you. give you a minute. Pleasure to meet all of you. Yeah. You too, right? Thanks for coming. Nice to see you again. So, so we're going to have our tax classification uh, hearing. Uh, hear this... Uh, here are some recommendations from the Board of Assessors uh, and take any action. So, I don't know if anyone from the Board of Assessors. Dan, are you leading this uh, yes. discussion? Yep. Go ahead. Um, each year, the, the Select Board has to vote on four tax options whether to have a single tax rate, grant an open space discount, have a small commercial exemption, or a residential exemption. And I'm just going to briefly go through and highlight parts of, of our classification report of uh, fiscal 20. For this year, uh, the average value is going from 24900 to 28800 for a single family house. The tax rate is going from 1236 to 1278 if it's a single tax rate. Uh, what was the value again? I'm sorry. 3249 to 3288. That's $39,000 increase. That's in value, not tax. 3249 to 32488. 328. Yeah, okay, okay. It's a $3,900 increase. Okay. Uh, if you went with the single rate, it would be 1278. If you shifted it the maximum of 50%, the residential rate would be 939, the commercial rate would be $19.17. Using the 328 value, 328.8 value, the average single family tax bill would be $4,202.06. If you shifted it 10%, it would drop to $3,978. Shifting at 25%, it would be 3646 and the full shift would be $3,087. Commercial properties valued at the same mm -hmm. figure would increase to $4,622 with a 10% shift, $5,250 with a 25% shift, and $6,303 with a 50% shift. On page four of our report, there are five commercial and five residential properties. And it shows the impact of what a 10% shift would do to these properties. These are the same properties that we've used basically since we started this report format. Uh, we, we replaced the owner's name with a letter, but they are the same properties. Basically, you're looking at a 10% jump for commercial and a 10%, uh, I mean a 5% decrease in residential if you shift to 10%. Our residential open space for this year is 65.34% residential and 34.65% commercial. It's a slight increase in commercial from last year, but mainly due to the new hotel opening up and a few of the other new buildings, commercial buildings. 
being taxed for the first time. And we also had a, a large increase in residential due to the condominiums on East Street going in. Uh, open space discount. Back in 2002, the DOR recommended that we eliminate the classification of open space in our <coughs> classification of real estate. Most communities now don't have open space classification. So we have a, we currently have a zero value. So granting a discount wouldn't really change anything for this year. The residential exemption. What that is, is owner-occupied properties can receive a discount of up to 35% of the average residential assessed value. That amounts to uh, $105,098 in value off of the average residential value of $300,280. That is different than the single family value because it includes multifamily and vacant lots. We estimate that almost 1,600 homes would qualify for the residential exemption. Because the, if the exemption is granted, any tax dollars raised by the residential class have to stay in the residential class, the tax rate would actually go up on property, or the amount of taxes paid would go up on properties that are assessed for 409600 that they would actually pay more in taxes than if we had a single rate. If we shifted it to full 35%, the residential rate would jump to $17.19 before taking off the value decrease, while all, the, all other classes would stay at $12.78. So on the bottom of that page, an owner occupied with no exemption would be 4202. Uh, with the 35% exemption, they'd go to 38.45, a decrease of 3.59, while a non-owner occupied would increase by $1,446 in tax. The small commercial exemption, we can grant up to a 10% reduction in the value of the property, as long as the property is assessed for less than $1 million and has less than 10 <coughs> annualized employees. Going through reports from the Department of Employment, there are 41 properties that meet these criteria in town. That would be a reduction in exempted value of $1,575,240. If the exemption were granted, the tax rate for commercial and industrial would go from 1278 to 1285, which is a, a slight increase, slight decrease. It's not really a whole lot of property value that would be exempted because there's only 41 parcels in town. <coughs> uh, some of the, the definitions on page 8, our levy limit for this year is $12,825,464. With a single tax rate, if we maximize it out at twelve seventy eight, we'll have $5,629 in unused levy capacity. That's the, the fraction of a penny that would be over at the twelve seventy eight, which we cannot raise. The next page the next two pages give the shift for each residential and commercial, what the tax rate would be in 1% increment shifts. The top line is 100% at 1278, and the bottom of page two is at 150%, it would be 939 for single family, uh, for residential, and 1917 for commercial and industrial. There's an addendum A, which lists the average fiscal 19 single family tax bill in 11 communities. There's six single uh, rate communities and five split rate communities. And what we found from an, uh, our analysis from last year is that rates, communities that have a split rate, before the rate was split, their average single family bill is $684 more than what Hadley is. After the split, it's $319 less. <coughs> And those communities that have the split rate are Westfield, West Springfield, Toyo, Chickadee, and Springfield. Uh, flipping back to page one, our recommendations are that the board adopt a single rate for fiscal 19, that we grant no open space discount, that there is no residential exemption and no small commercial exemption for fiscal 20. And if there's any questions, I'll be happy to.
answer that. Where do uh, farms or agricultural uh, properties fall under the definitions? I see residential, open space, commercial. I don't know. Missing the farms? Or Anything that's agricultural is considered commercial. Okay. Anything that's in chapter, the tax is, if you split the rate, the tax impact is inconsequential because chapter land, they're paying almost nothing and the taxes on it. It's the people that have parcels that are farmed that are less than five acres that would get hit with it. So you might have a five acre parcel that's assessed at 180,000 or 4.8 acre parcel that's at 180. That because it's actually being farmed, if you were to split it, their taxes would go up. But the big, the big farm parcels would not really see uh, a major hit because what they would go up, their houses would go down significantly more. And what's our, our current rate? You recommend 1236. 1236. And if we basically we're going to have to go 1278 to balance the recap right. to the max. So it's up 42 cents. Mm -hmm. And that the average <coughs> increase is $186 for this year on the average single family house. And that's made up of a couple factors. Um, it's the normal 2.5% increase, some of it is from the values changing and going up. Um, there's about $32 or so in new debt exclusions that are on there. And uh, one factor that a lot of people don't realize is UMass bought the NAS building, the second building that they have. And when taxable property becomes exempt, that property, the taxes that they pay, get spread out amongst all the other taxable properties in town. So that's a little bit over $18 for the average house <coughs> if UMass bought that building. So the, uh, if we were to do anything like the residential exemption, that shift or whatnot for owner-occupied versus non-owner-occupied, how many houses would be impacted that are non-owner-occupied? Uh, you're probably looking at in the neighborhood of 200 units, okay. but it would also impact any vacant land. So if somebody has their house with a couple of parcels in town, they would end up paying more if you did the residential exemptions. Okay. So if we, uh, and I'm just throwing this out here, yeah. as uh, and looking at the chart here, if we were to go at the, I guess it would be a commercial, basically a 7% shift, that would drop the residential rate to 1230-ish, which is slightly lower than what we're paying now. Is this including all the stuff that was passed at town meeting, the $32 worth of? No, no. this is just what's being, okay. the debt that's being paid this year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we'd be down around 1230 versus the 1236 we're at now. kind of leaning toward uh, looking at a 10% shift here because all I'm hearing from that along with a small commercial exemption I think would be realistic because I'm hearing a lot of pushback from people that are tired of every year increases. I think we, if we were to do something like that, it's a slippery slope. Because once we start down that path, we can get an exemption and keep going and look at the chart of can you even make it worse? Holyoke, you know. I mean, they've got, it's up to the point where residential and commercial are off by a factor of two or more. And so if we start down that path. So you're saying shift possibly but no exemption? I'm just saying if we start shifting, it's a slippery slope. And then what happens to the businesses and all those kinds of things as well. I, I don't know. I just, I, I see what you're saying and I, I agree with what your intent is. I just don't know if like making the decision right now, tonight, when we're presented with this, if it's the right time to do it. Well, and I'm not saying we have to make the decision. I'm just yeah. throwing it out there too. Yeah. Much. I think it's something worth learning more about. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, we've had a couple of presentations of folks come in and talk about the split rate versus the single rate. Um, 
One of the things that we had talked about was if we, if we, because a lot of people get confused about the um, the fact that if you if you make the shift, it doesn't increase your tax base at all. It's just that you're you're reallocating the existing pie, right. so you're not creating any more revenue by doing this. Um, to your point, you who bears the burden of it. Right. Yeah. So so I, I see where you're going with. What we had talked about at one point is when we were seriously looking at the possibility, really for the first time, of doing an override, that if you went down that path, that would be an appropriate time to make a change so that then the, you know, you're, you're increasing taxes and then... You're basically shifting the override to commercial. Too. Exactly, you're shifting over to commercial. I think the concern has always been that if, if we make this transition, that you actually bring people's <coughs> tax bills back, that it's lower, um, which feels good for a year. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then you're just off and running again. Um, and then there, there's always been concern about kind of collateral damage. I mean, it, I've always agreed that, you know, I, I wish we could tear the commercial. And we can't, Dan, right? We can't. Yeah, there's no separate classification for like Shift big it. box or something like that. How can you do that then for uh, farms that have more property than somebody that just has five or six acres? Chapter. It's, if it's in chapter, it has to be at least five acres actively farmed. If it's under five acres, they don't qualify. Okay. State law. State law. So that, that's why they would be taxed more. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they, they don't get a value reduction. Okay. Do you have any idea what the percentage of farms in town are that have less than five acres that are not in some sort of chapter program? That's probably a tough question, but. Yeah, a lot of what we have is in chapter. Okay. I mean, we've got probably two four or 500 parcels that are in chapter. It's over 2,000 acres, isn't it? We've got probably about 6,000 acres 6, that are farmed, yeah, and in chapter right now. There are a lot of parcels that are like one acre or mm -hmm. less there's than five. There's a lot of They're pieces on cemetery yeah. that are yeah. 2.4 and unless somebody buys two or three of those parcels, they're not in chapter. Right. So they're paying based on 20, 30 grand as opposed to 3,000. Uh, the one reason I was asking about the residential exemption is just to encourage, you know, less kind of student less stuffer type. Stuff, yeah purchases, uh, you know, and that's slippery too, because there are some people, families want to rent a house and that kind of thing, so, you know, it's, it's tricky. <laughs> mm -hmm. How do we penalize certain things and not reward others? Or whatever, you know? Yeah, I'm afraid about making a shift where you might temporarily satisfy one group that le has legitimate concerns about about uh, property tax increases, but then kind of creating another group to come in and argue the other side of it in future years. I don't understand right along. You know, I don't want to see empty storefronts and big boxes that are vacant. Yeah, and if we start raising the rates, they're mm -hmm. going to start looking elsewhere, and then it's, you know, but their valuation is high, so they their pay valuation a lot of that. is high. You lose That's one of you those, and then you're going to have real tax problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm always open to looking at it um, with more analysis, I think. Mm -hmm. I think to, to your point, to, to make that decision tonight, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable at all. Yeah. But to David's point, you know, we do have a lot of concern out there about uh, the, the affordability. For, mm -hmm. When's the deadline for it? When well, does it have to be done? The tax rate. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, mm -hmm. Tax rate has to, this has the hearing has to be concluded and you have to vote before we submit the recap. Right. Yeah, so we're talking about because we're late in season, we need to get this done by Friday. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. So I, yeah. I, don't, I don't see doing anything for 2020. <laughs> but I'll I, that time. <laughs> but I think if the board wanted to seriously yeah. take a look at this, then we could put a plan in place so that we're doing a lot of the legwork in the first half of. Calendar make a motion to leave it all the same right now. Yeah. I'll second that motion. But we'll accept the recommendations of the assessment. Yeah. yeah. I'll second. So I guess my question is, Brian, are, single we, rate. Are, are we this late and this short on time because of the free cash issue? Is that why? Or? Mm -hmm. or has that been 
resolved or not? No, we're going to be meeting with the uh, friend uh, tomorrow and we'll get that all worked out. We don't need free cash at this point to set the tax rate, but we did defer the town meeting to as late as we could in, order, in hopes that we would have free cash. A any, any further discussion? Jesus got some good rates on cards. Maybe we'll get one. <laughs> Over a half a million dollars or something. The way we're spending. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 But, um, I think we should, I mean, if it's something yeah. we seriously want to consider, I mean, we should put it the, on our calendar. Throughout the year, we should visit it and mm -hmm. yeah. get some numbers together and see what the businesses think about it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, have I think more of a hearing where we don't have to vote, but a hearing where we hear yeah. what people I mean, have to say. This last minute stuff is ridiculous. How can you have a public hearing or, or a debate or discussion about things when you have a deadline of tomorrow? Yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah. So, and that's not a, um, you know, I, I'm not blaming the assessment for anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah typ typically what we do is we do this in two steps. We present a lot of the information, give everybody a couple right. weeks to think it over, and then take the vote. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we, we don't have that luxury this time. Okay. So could I ask maybe um, at a, an upcoming financial management team meeting, um, Dan, you know, you, you know what data elements or data points are available to you, and maybe we could just talk through what sort of information would be helpful for the board to entertain. <coughs> and and yeah. again, you know, first quarter, second quarter of next year would be fine. So once the train leaves the station, we can't do anything right away anyway. What communities have found is once they go to split rate, it kind of snowballs. You have to go to the 150 at some point. And the state actually changed it several years ago to 175 for communities like Springfield and Holyoke where they were paying almost three times what the, the residential rate was. They've since said, no, this is not right, and they rolled it back to the 150. But a lot of communities like Holyoke and Springfield, they're, they're at just about at a $25 tax rate. They're not experiencing, they don't get their 2.5% increase every year. So they're kind of stuck for revenue. It's new growth or nothing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you for coming Thanks. and presenting tonight and getting this getting this tied up. I mean, your your quotes here since 1995, you had 147 million dollars in commercial in commercial and, value and yeah. industrial value. What the hell are we doing with our money? We got to keep raising the taxes, or if we're going to split, uh, split the rate. It's no, no, no. It's a question for yeah. this board, not for you. $1.9 million in taxes. That's roughly 15% yep. of our tax levy. Mm -hmm. yep. It goes to town meeting. Pays the bills. I was going to say, we're still the lowest on yeah. this list, yeah. so it's hard to... Right. Okay. Um, all right. Where are we at here? Um, let's, why don't we do the SWOT analysis? Because there's a lot of books here for that. Okay. Um, uh, school, Council on Aging, and Library. Um, school, would you like to go first? Does anybody want to go first? I'd be happy to. You wanted to go first, David? Thank sure. you, yeah. Stay seated. You, whatever you prefer. You okay. can stand up, you can sit down. I'll stay seated. Um, so I think most of you know me, Haley Wood, um, the Director of Senior Services for Hadley. I'm um, sharing with you a summary of the SWOT analysis for 2019 that was prepared by my predecessor, Suzanne Cavasano, this past August. Um, hoping I'm hitting the main points that are relevant to this group and the town in general. Um, I thought I'd start with sharing the goals of the Council on Aging. Um, those are to improve the quality of life of Hadley's residents age 60 and over and to offer tools to remain independent within their own community through healthy aging programs, services, education, and social interaction. Um, and the current demographic of um, 
people over 60 in this town is 34%, 28% is a state average. It's gonna go up. Um, so um, most of you know, I'm sure you know that SWAT is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I'll start with an, just a summarization of strengths. Um, we have a strong professional outreach team, um, really headed up with, by um, Lauren Hannigan, um, our outreach worker who is now at 25 hours a week as a, as a permanent um, shift, um, voted in recently at town meeting. Um, we have a, a SHINE counselor, Jane Kennedy, who is very actively involved at our center um, during open enrollment. I myself am a former outreach worker, so I bring um, skills and experience in the realm of um, access to public benefits to, um, to the town um, and support Lauren. We have a weekly, our, our veterans agent is, has weekly office hours and he is very alert to finding ways to make sure that any eligible person who has served in the armed, um, um, in the armed forces has um, access to whatever benefits they're eligible for. Um, another strength is our very strong friends group, um, which uh, is comprised of about 90 volunteers um, who do many, many things, who perform vital functions like um, um, staffing our reception desk, they fundraise, they, they, they significantly um, contribute to um, our ability to, to do things and purchase things. Um, they oversee the production of our newsletter and um, PR in general. Um, we have a triad partnership with the sheriff's office, with the sheriff's office and other town first responders, um, which, for example, this week delivered um, many sand buckets to area seniors um, for the for the coming winter, and have other programs in place to um, that are specifically designed for um, vulnerable older adults. We have a new van system utilizing a new van. That van system currently runs Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 9:30 to 1:30. Um, with very reasonable fares, um, and we have, um, we're seeking a, a grant to expand that service to be five days a week. Um, and I think that um, the, the older adult community in this town, it can be counted as an amazing strength because um, as evidenced by the new senior center, um, it's a very strong grassroots um, group that can get things done and have a very effective reach and a strong voice. Um, weaknesses. We have a small staff, only two people are full-time, me um, at 40 hours and Violet, our programs um, coordinator at 35. Um, Lauren Hannigan, our outreach coordinator, is part-time and we have no um, paid staff um, on reception. Um, we believe that we'll need a, a maintenance staff for the new building that exceeds it's hard it's hard to picture how the transition will, will go and I would I, I believe that we will we will need um, a staff person who might be also in charge of maintaining other buildings in the town um, our van needs weather protection that's um, a current weakness um, it's parked out in the open and it will be for the winter um, the van system is in a formative stage and although I've just talked about it as a strength it's 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 we're new to organizing transportation on this level and there are some bumps in the road and some irregularities and some communication um, mishaps that are happening um, and I, you know, we plan to address and strengthen that service um, as we get more accustomed to managing it. Um, another weakness would be that only about a third of the town's 60 plus population regularly utilizes the center. Um, we, we have high hopes that um, our new space will attract a new set of people, but we will we will we'll be diversifying um, our offerings and becoming more effective at getting the word out about what we do and how we can help people and um, how they can enjoy what we have to offer too. It's not just about services; it's also programs. Opportunities. Um, the Massachusetts Councils on Aging has regular grants for a number of relevant programs for older adults. Um, they, there are things that need to be seized upon quickly and planned for, and there's, um, but that, that's sort of an ongoing source of opportunity that um, I'm alert to. Um, we are current, uh, there's a current um, PBTA grant proposal out that I, I refer to for um, expanding our van services that will provide a strong opportunity. Um, we 
I look to collaborations with local artists and other creatives in this town for programming and um, revitalizing what we have to offer to people and attracting younger, older adults to, um, to our department and, and our, our space. Um, of course, the new building opening in spring 2020, um, probably April, um, is an immense opportunity. Um, we have, you, uh, last year um, was the, the first year of a tax work off program for seniors. We're offering the same thing this year. Um, and we have five um, great job descriptions that will, should give people an opportunity in this, who are eligible um, in age, income, and whether or not they're homeowners to um, have $500 off their property taxes. Um, we're also growing our ability to help certain vulnerable adults, particularly people who are on mass health, um, because that's some experience that I bring to the table that I plan to um, help our population navigate. Threats include unmet home care needs. Um, where it's difficult for people to age in place when they become increasingly frail, able to maintain their homes, um, able to clean their houses, and able to care for themselves in certain ways. And Highland Valley Elder Services, which is the regional area services access point, um, is very challenged to meet the needs of the entire service area that it that it covers, which is all of Hampshire County and 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 some big and some big municipalities in Hamden County. And you know we have a number of people who are enrolled in their services who don't have a worker. Um, so it's very difficult for people to access the help they need to stay at home. That's, that's a strong threat. Um, economic insecurity in general for people who depend on social security and small pensions um, that of course are now fixed and not keeping pace with this rising cost of living. Um, the rapid growth of people affected by dementia is a threat that I see um, as a worker, um, as someone who's been in this field, and um, and we, I believe that we are challenged to even be dementia competent, never mind dementia friendly, um, in our in our community. I think that's a threat, um, and the future of Social Security and Medicare in general, um, which always seem to be up for grabs at the federal level, um, certainly creates. Uh, say a climate of unease that is very anxiety producing for older low, lower income adults uh, older adults um, I just want to close with a recommendation that um, one is in the works we're obtaining um, a, 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 a car a vehicle to help with transportation needs that's going to be donated to us I think this is going to really increase our responsiveness and our ability to to help people in um, a more nimble fashion than we can with the van system. Um, I, th I believe that we should establish a, a transportation volunteer corps through the RSVP program. Um, and I would recommend the creation of a maintenance position for all municipal buildings, including the new senior center, which could also help us coordinate openings and closings after hours, which I'm seeing as another Another strong likelihood with the use of the building, um, which will be very attractive to other people who want to use um, various function spaces, and we currently don't have the staff power to handle that, and I think it would be um, a good thing to be able to marshal um, for revenue and um, increased interest in the center. Great. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Well, very nice job. Thank you for all that sure. information. That's yeah. uh, a lot to digest. So thank you. <laughs> and, and good job for your first first attempt at it. Uh, what is it? One month on the job or something? This is week number four. Week number four. Yeah. So great job. Thank you. Hey, we just a quick question on the transportation. Um, reading a lot about that in the newspaper lately. Um, obviously, Northampton's having its own struggles with their senior center, um, but I know it's come up in East Hampton and other places. PVTA, has there ever been, I, I know at one point PVTA was um, supposed to be providing like minivan service to help folks, whatever, is that They just, do. They do? They okay. still do, and we, Lauren um, will often arrange rides for our clients who need them to to supplement what we can do. So they're still being utilized. What they're hoping that the PVTA grant that we are seeking and have an, app, an, app, an active application under consideration for 
their strategy, I think, is to, is to unload some of those responsibilities. So if, if we took on another two days a week of van service, they could reduce what they're already offering. So we, yes, PVTA does offer van services and I think has special rates for our age cohort, but um, it's, it's tricky for it's tricky for a lot of people to use it. It's tricky for a lot of people to use our RAN system. It's hard to think ahead. It's, um, it's planning. Right. It's planning. It's scheduling and planning. That's right. That's PVTA's biggest problem. Right. And I mean, and I and we're running into it too. So we're, you know, kind of in that learning curve of organizing a transportation system. Mm -hmm. There's nothing for emergencies. Besides 911. Besides 911. <laughs> no, we, we Someti cannot. Well, sometimes yeah. that's overused for the wrong reason. Right. Right. So, uh, unfortunately, when somebody can't get a ride or whatever, get to the doctors, then uh, they head to the emergency room, which is not always appropriate. Yeah. So, True. Um, you know, I'm looking at it from that end, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think David mentioned it last week, but thank you to uh, Steve Lewis for the vehicle donation. Indeed. So, yeah. yeah. That was yeah. great. And the, uh, the cover for the new van, that kind of... We never saw anything, right? Or was that? Yeah, that's in next year's capital plan. It's next year's to, capital plan. To the fire department paving. Okay. Yeah, because I know the fire department had some needs yeah. there too. So. Yeah. Maybe. I think it'll happen. Just okay. Yeah. yeah. So we're Takes time. with them because it was cheaper to do a shared rather than two separate. So yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes budget. sense. Makes sense. Okay. Okay. Um, do you have to put up one of those? It was like a um, vinyl, uh, vinyl. No, no steel um, carport type thing, right? It was basically what it was. Okay. North Hadley. What was transported down here? Just an idea. I think that man has going to have use for that. Yeah. <laughs> Joanne, would you like to go next for library? So. Um, I sent this out to you. We met uh, as a board and did this with uh, both Patrick and the trustees. Strengths. So we provide a wide range of services and programs. We just kind of came to your high school and rated your high schoolers and had a great after school program today, actually, um, and feel like we're hitting lots of age range in our programming. And I think that will get people excited to have better space in the new library. Um, not a lot of people know this, but we participate in CW Mars Regional Library System, which you all take for granted, but if we didn't, we couldn't get books from other towns. We couldn't exchange and get books from other places. So it is a bonus that we participate in that. Um, our circulation numbers are high and have risen steadily. Um, we have monthly director's reports. It's all on our website and clearly indicated. Um, we have strong support from the MBLC, as we know, by our $3.9 million grant. Uh, we have a committed trustee group that meets regularly and all are actively participating. We have an active friends group. We have experienced staff. Uh, the new energy efficient and fully accessible library is under construction. That's not a strength. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we have diverse and loyal patrons. We have a central location, and we have an established capital campaign and a library capital fund. So we're, we're not only thinking about our building, but we thought about our future. So the capital fund we started um, is set so that it will go on even after the building is built. We will kind of, we plan on doing annual appeals and keeping a capital fund for the library. The town graciously help us set it up. and. Um, we're excited that we have this capital fund. For weaknesses, we have obviously in our, if you look at our current building, we have a lack of space and we're not handicap accessible. Um, our friends group is there and active, but they're small. We would love to grow our friends group. And the cost of the new building construction, the higher bids may reduce funds available for furnishings, equipment, and landscaping. Some opportunities. Um, a, an opportunity is to grow and strengthen the friends group to really reach out, especially as we've got a new library. People might get excited and we might be able to grow our friends group. To improve and broaden our website, Facebook and social media exposure. 
to build new and stronger partnerships with other cultural town organizations and interests, like the schools, the, so the society, and Hadley Media. We had the PTO meeting in our library just a few weeks ago, the, the elementary school PTO meeting. We had to meet in our basement. It wasn't handicapped accessible. It was hard. So in a new library, they're going to have a meeting room that they can just go into. They don't even have to, if it's after hours, you don't even have to access the library because it's a separate entrance for our community room. So that, I think, will bring a lot of goodwill to the town for another place for people to meet. Um, the new building will generate lots of excitement, interest, and use will bring um, opportunity for donations and more capital support. We'll hope that people will get excited and really start giving for our annual capital fund. So threats. Uh, physical constraints may make retention of experienced staff and maintenance of that adequate hours difficult. So if, if for chance library funding is cut at state level or local level, things may change. Could happen, the same thing, we don't know. Um, a tight town budget could negatively affect building and grounds maintenance if, if that happens. We're, not, we're just obviously like you thinking. Sustainability benefits and energy cost savings of a new building may be reduced if unable to install the solar panels in the metal roof. So we are working on that. We have a capital campaign. I actually just got word that um, we got some exposure on TV22. And we have folks giving to the solar panels, which is nice. But um, if we are unable to put them on, it means more energy costs. And changing town demographics may impact demand for services. And so we've got good. any questions? Seems, seems good. I um, can't think of any questions off the top of my head. Uh, anybody else have any questions? Pretty straightforward. to the building. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to say it's one wordy one. thing that I told Patrick on the phone is that um, it would be great, don't get mad at me, but if we scheduled this like regularly in a calendar for us to do, I thought it, I think it's a good exercise as a board to go through this. Um, we dedicated half a meeting to really talking to like taking a step back from day to day and thinking about the library. and. I'd love to just get it on our account. I mean, we could commit to doing it ourselves, but I think it's beneficial to the town. And I I just wonder if all of you would at some point consider, you know, every November or whatever you suggest what we, we would do this. Um, because I do think it was a good opportunity for us to say, okay, we're building a building. We're always immersed in that. We were able to step back as a board and look at the bigger picture. It was a good opportunity. Yeah. Well, thanks for participating in it because it helps us to just think about all these different things mm -hmm. and trends across the town and all, what what's good and what needs work still. Mm -hmm. So thanks. Okay. Uh, next, I know we have the school uh, on there. So. Sure. Any? Uh, I just would like to start, which I meant to say at the special town meeting, I'd like to start by thanking the select board, finance and capital committees, and the taxpayers for the support that they uh, show the schools, which is pretty typical. We don't take that for granted, so thank you. Uh, so you have a copy of the matrix of strengths and weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I'm not going to read those to you. I'll just talk about the larger themes. We think about the strengths in terms of three major strengths. Our students, our faculty, and this town. And so our students are remarkable. They're creative and critical thinkers. They're effective communicators. They're great collaborators. And what I'm most struck by with our students is that they genuinely, so they don't not only want to be skilled and adept problem solvers, <coughs> They want to be good problem finders. They're constantly thinking about the challenges that their generation faces, and they're also imagining the kinds of challenges that we might face in the future. And they also <coughs> understand the distinction between, what I say is the distinction between being smart and being wise. So they get that smart people know a whole lot of stuff, and our students are knowledgeable. They also understand that the difference between smart and wise is that wise people try to use their intellect in service to something greater than themselves. 
and we have countless examples of our students doing that. I often share the weekly update with you where we show some of those examples of students contributing to this community, to their schools, to seniors in town, just countless examples where they've identified problems even within our own system. I'm thinking of a graduate of last year who looked at our tech <coughs> loaning system, so how we get Chromebooks into the hands of students every single day, and he said, this is a mess. So he created an entire system, an electronic checkout system, an inventory system for us. He since graduated and is going to major in engineering and computer science and rule the world. Um, <laughs> if he sees this on YouTube, I'll work for you one day. <laughs> um, but he's just one example of students. He's emblematic of the student body at Hopkins Academy. So that's perhaps our greatest strength. Our faculty are not a group of people who constantly ask, what do you mean? One more grant, one more thing, when will it stop? They're excited, they're energized, they look forward to implementing practices that will bring about the best possible outcomes for our students. And examples of that are we have teams of teachers who are working on the development of innovation pathways. So you may have seen in the paper that we received preliminary designation from Governor Baker for two innovation pathways, one in environmental and life sciences at Hopkins Academy and one in business and finance. We've also been invited to submit a final proposal for an early college high school model. We're doing that with Greenfield Community College. We'll submit something called a kaleidoscope application. Uh, essentially, it's an application to be considered to be part of the cohort. There'll be very few districts that are invited to do this, um, to look at how we can make school education more engaging, more interesting, more joyful for our faculty, for our students. <coughs> We just recently, another example of something a student did, we had one of our students, Allison Markowski, Ali Markowski, who um, I think is going to or has sent an email to the select board chair and the town administrator is looking forward to perhaps presenting to the select board. She submitted a grant on behalf of the district. We found out today it will be funded between $2,500 and $5,000 to hold a Cooler Communities Expo, educate people on ways that we can reduce our carbon footprint and be more environmentally uh, conscious. This is a passion of hers and several other students and uh, she has to work with me to write the grant, submit the grant, be the event organizer and project lead when uh, we implement the project. We have seen, um, it looks like, because we don't have our October 1 count, we submitted our October 1 count, but we won't have the report back from the state. But at this point, our June numbers for school choice, students choosing into our district, uh, were 95 in June of 2019. We graduated six seniors who were choosing in, leaving us 89 students who were choosing in. It looks like we're up to 108 in school choice in. That's just over a 20% increase from last year until this year. Again, we'll have those numbers certified in about a month. And uh, the third uh, major strength is the town. We don't take lightly or for granted the level of commitment and support that we receive from the town and from the community. This town funds its schools well above minimum local contribution. We're keenly aware of that. We feel an obligation to ensure you get a return on your investment. I've tried to provide you with some examples of where we are trying to provide that return on investment. We recently uh, received, Hopkins Academy recently received a College Success Award was granted a College Success Award because the percentage of students who go on to college from Hopkins Academy and who do not require any sort of remediation so they don't waste time in non-credit bearing courses that cost them money is much higher than the state average. It's over 85%. That's just one example of how um, for students and also for the town, we do see uh, what you invest in us, you deserve a good return on that investment. Our weaknesses and threats. Um, so there's a declining uh, enrollment across Western Massachusetts. There's a declining birth rate. This is affecting not only K-12 public education, but it's affecting colleges. It's affecting colleges all through the Northeast. You've probably heard about colleges that have had to close because of declining enrollment and are having significant financial difficulties. So that's certainly a problem. We're fortunate that we have far more students choosing in than we have students choosing out under public school choice program. But it's, it's this kind of I don't know, it's this kind of insidious game where we're just taking one another's 
uh, students and inviting them into our, each of our districts. And right now, um, I'm not sure at this point, we have opportunities of additional grants and we continue to write grants if, to support expanded programming in the schools and, uh, and in the town. We certainly try to support the town um, with some of our grant writing. The Mass Taxpayers Foundation has reported a budget surplus for the state. Right now, they're reporting somewhere around $870 million at the state level. That's from Mass, Tax Mass Taxpayers Foundation. So the governor was recommending just over about $100 million of that be spent on education. House Ways and Mees is saying they're advocating for something more like 84 85 Of that, they're looking at about $18 million for charter reimbursement which would be good news, but the recommendation right now is to change the charter reimbursement formula and to change it from reimbursement over a six-year period, closing, uh, narrowing that window down to a three-year period. And actually, for most districts, you would get reimbursement for a year. You would only get a second year of reimbursement if you were an underperforming district that had a lot of seats, charter seats. Um, I, I mean, I wish the state would simply fully fund the existing Chapter 46 formula, which under that formula, the town, since FY14 through FY19, the town would be owed just over a half a million dollars. It would be nice to see that fully funded. And my concern is that even if they change the formula, I'm not certain what would change in terms of the obstacles that prevented the previous formula from being fully funded. Like what precisely would be different that would ensure this, would, this new formula would be fully funded. So certainly um, the continued growth of, of charter schools presents a problem, not because they're inherently bad, they're wonderful public school options for families, um, but because the, the current funding model makes it really challenging um, for towns, particularly for smaller towns, to manage um, charter school expenses. And so overall, we have a tremendous amount to celebrate, um, and most of that stems from the fact that we have a dedicated, talented staff, we have a supportive town, and we have students that, um, you know, I'm excited to grow old. I mean it. Like, they're brilliant, they're dreamers, they're doers, they're thinkers, and they're kind. So I'm not worried about it. They're going to build me robots and driverless cars, and I'm going to be good. They'll be great doctors and great people. They already are. If there's anything that we can do to demonstrate a uh, better return on investment, just let us know. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Any questions? How, do, how does the restructuring at the state level of the budget affect Hadley specifically the school funding formula and all that so the changes to chapter 70 if which it's not it doesn't look like they, they've gone in this direction but there were four models mm -hmm. and fully funded if all elements were fully funded uh, the projection and the way they did this projection is they looked at projected enrollment about well less than 10 years out so about five six years out about 2025 they said if all elements were fully funded, then Hadley, with their enrollment projections, would see an increase to Chapter 70 of $600,000, which would be fantastic for the town, well-deserved for the town. I always want to be careful that the schools here, our faculty certainly understands, that's not an infusion of $600,000 to the school by any means, because the town is already funding the schools well above minimum. So it would be nice for the town to recoup some of that money in Chapter 70. But it does not look like that. The fully funded model, it would take them a while to get there, and it's not their starting point. So I think uh, the way it will go is that it will benefit more larger um, urban districts with a greater percentage of students classified as high needs. Mm -hmm. So there'll be something. There was an increase in Chapter 70 funding that we did see, and that's great. Mm -hmm. um, it won't be... I, I don't foresee it being a windfall. Yeah. That doesn't mean I'm not grateful. Like, if you're a state legislator watching, keep it up. You know, it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. good. Keep it up. But. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? And uh, I believe Board of Health is next week. Um, Hadley Media. 
although they're behind the camera, John, I don't know if you want to say anything, or Drew kind of sent us the list. I don't know if uh, there's anything in, in particular you want to say. He told me that um, the SWAT report that he wrote kind of stands on its own, mm -hmm. and um, that you guys all have it, and he let me know, he prepared me, and I, you know, I read it this afternoon, and I'm prepared to answer any questions you guys have. Okay. Um, I don't really need to do a big yeah. presentation. I, I don't think it's pretty simple. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. The only thing I might add yeah. is um, where am I? Got the channel. <laughs> <laughs> Are you on there? I, I wouldn't really add anything. Um, you know, we're we're excited about the space. We're excited about the. Um, Possibility of maybe moving downstairs to be more accessible to people at some point down the road, uh, but um, yeah, it's all in there. Okay. Uh, any any other questions for Hadley Media? Doing a great job. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for thanks for saying so. Doing these. As you all are. Everybody, yeah. Everybody is working yes. hard to for the town. We appreciate it. Yeah, I think that's good for all our SWOT analyses for tonight. Um, uh, just thinking what we want to do, if we want to do, do we want to do uh, Senior Center Library and Fire Substation building projects now so that these folks can go home? Um, <laughs> Jane shaking her head over there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm going to stay here all night. <laughs> Would you like to start, Joyce, the fire substation? I don't really have too much more than I offered last week. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't done anything more. I sent you some um, the update of our, our, our meeting last week, um, and when they met, and they met again today for finances, there was something about a light pole that we needed near the driveway going towards the... Um, the, uh, from the side to the back, so they're putting in a pole that way to have extra lighting on that side. Okay. Um, that's probably the only, only changes right now. They seem to be moving along. There's no bumps right now, so seems good. Okay. Great. Library? Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, library's moving along. Um, looks like uh, framing coming up, right? So yeah. next week, it looks like we're on the schedule for that, unless something happened that I Miss? Nothing. Okay. Yeah. So we actually start seeing some. All the pulling went in well on the floor support? Or? Yeah. Well, the uh, slab. Slab support, yeah. 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 And there's some concern about the uh, weather, you know, temperature yeah. fluctuations, but the experts are saying don't worry about it. So. No. Yeah. So that's good. And then other than that, I think, yeah, you know, a lot of focus on uh, the building committee focusing on uh, interior, making decisions relative to colors and all of that good stuff, uh, and really fundraising. It's probably at the forefront of everybody's mind. Are they going to be able to get the base code on the driveway where the senior center is in the next couple of weeks? Do you know or not? They're really behind. That's the same. You're talking about the senior center side? The whole. The no, the, whole the, the library side. Are, are they doing the whole thing together? Or they just. No, I don't think so. Not. They are going to be separate. Okay. Yeah. That was a couple of questions. Couple yeah, I don't think they're. The asking questions. I don't think yeah. they're doing the base code over there, mm -hmm. or binder binder code or whatever. Yeah. yeah. At the library, but the at seniors, the library, at the senior the center. Senior yeah, center. that's the plan right now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if we get two feet of snow between now and then, <laughs> probably won't. But yeah. knock on wood. Yeah, you had to say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry. We kind of skirted it this yeah. week so far, so yeah. it's not over yeah. breath, right? Um, and something I wanted to talk to you guys about the library, I might as well just say it now, is we wanted to talk to you guys about the sign up front, because we were going to do a shared sign, so I was hoping I could come to your meeting and talk about that on the 9th, maybe. The signage for the actual final signage for the building? Yeah, like we are going to do a combined Hadley Senior Center library sign. I know this that is a big so debate, final. but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you believe it? I know, it's we, way out. We just got our, like, you know. Construction sign? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, anyway, yeah. we're hoping to come oh, talk to you. Yeah, a few yeah, of, of us come to the meeting and talk to you. I need to let Allison, Allison know. Just let Allison know yeah. when you want to come and she'll add you to yeah. the agenda. Okay. You're yeah. always welcome. Yeah. Um, all right. Senior Center. I've uh, got a bunch of so, some notes uh, good on the uh, financial side, some change orders and the AV scope to s discuss, but uh, 
I don't know if you guys want to say anything about the project or where it's, it's at or what it's going. It's exciting. Molly talked about all the colors and everything being chosen. Mm -hmm. Today we got to see the furniture that we've been through this whole thing and what the rooms were actually going to look like and the furniture is out to bid. So it's kind of exciting. Yeah, so we have a couple things in the budgets I just wanted to go over. So a couple of one thing is we got a $7,000 credit since we didn't have the construction trailer, getting a credit for that. Um, EDM has started to credit us the $8,000 for changes. Uh, so far they've credited us $5,923.62. Um, so we have some money coming back. Uh, we have uh, one change order to approve, and that is change order number, what was it? It's probably right here, um, 26R2, and this is for the bollards along the south side of the building. We were basically going to have a sidewalk there, um, and it was elevated, and that was going to serve as a curb, but after looking at it on the site, we're going to have it kind of a even grade on the south side of the building, but we need the bollards there for pedestrian protection. And originally we had talked about this being in the $20,000 range, but it's come back at $11,550.44 on my sheet. I can look at the actual change well, order really and make sure that's the number. Stuff now. Yeah. <laughs> a few of these under Oh, supposed to be working on my own project <laughs> so uh, so yeah so uh, I don't know if we'd like to make a motion to uh, approve that change order I'll make a motion to approve second okay all those in favor aye. 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 and then we have this one might not go so easy yeah this one is gonna be harder <laughs> uh, so next is we had sent the audio video quotes out for bid um, we've gotten the bids back. Uh, the Senior Center Committee voted this week to approve this bid for $143,178.07 uh, $143, to Pro AV Systems out of Chelmsford, Mass. They came in as the low bidder to provide the AV scope um, for the building. Uh, I will just say that, you know, this project budget is looking really good. We had $250,000 in the budget for furniture, fixture, and equipment. Um, this is slightly high, but we have a contingency in the budget that we're well within, and the contingency covers this discrepancy. And I mean, we're still, if you look at the project budget, we're not into the original contingency number whatsoever. And this falls within that, that reason why that contingency is there. Um, and it's something that will add value to the senior center as a whole and something that we've been planning on having there since the beginning. Um, so I would recommend that we um, award these folks the contract and get this work started. What was the, um, I'm just looking for the FF&E line. So FF&E, I can show you here, might be easier than that sheet, okay. but it, this is the original budget. So 250000 was for all the FF&E mm -hmm. and AV equipment is included in that number. So with this AV equipment coming in at the 143, what are you expecting FF&E to wind up at? Do you guys know what that is approximate yeah, the, the estimate? furniture in general is somewhere just under 200. One of the reasons we didn't have an absolute number for this early on is because we were told, and I believe correctly from what I know, is that technology is changing so rapidly that they could have spec something two years ago, which is when we were starting this whole process, and that is absolutely obsolete financially and availability. So they just put off 
doing that knowing that it would be in the contingency budget. But there wasn't any um, like baseline scoping in terms of, you know, for the, we're going to have uh, Oh yeah, we want projectors like here and, yeah. and screens here and video monitors here. Yeah, we knew all of that, but the specifics of how it was being hooked up that and run. Yeah. yeah, but is the, is the 143, did we? That's the whole thing. But did we, did we add on to the original? No, scope? No, it's the same or scope strictly that we've just had. lack of information. Yeah, it was the it was we didn't ever have a, a sense of cost on it because they pointed out and I believe it wouldn't have been a valid number anyway. But isn't this forty three percent above what the projected number was? They were you they there were throwing no out a hundred thousand. Yeah. yeah, we last last meeting or two meetings ago when we talked about it, we were told a hundred thousand for an estimate and that we were we were sitting it was spun at that time of being at the most 100,000. It might come in lower. So <laughs> now, now we're uh, 43,000 above that. But that's well, why I was asking if stuff got It's always that. been in the budget, but not with a number. Yeah. So that it makes was probably 100,000 two years ago. So it basically makes the FF&E line item with, with this addition, with, with this cost included, is about $100,000 over budget. Yes. Which will then come out of contingency. Right. Which we have there. We're not cutting it. I guess what I want to make clear is basically the savings we receive because of the, the lower than expected bid. The one thing that went into that number is putting the metal roof on the building. Everything else so far, including this, is covered within that original project contingency. We're not eating into that savings with this number that's there mm -hmm. it's just it's just hard because again the the other the counter argument and again i think everybody here wants the very best build if we're going to do yeah. this do it once and do it right big big fan of that but it's just hard because we in, in reducing the size of the building theoretically there should have been some sort of a rateable condensing i guess but I don't think we reduced the number of rooms, did we? We still have we the lost same one conference room. So we lost the conference room, but we didn't, you know. So we still have most of these rooms were in the old building as well. I guess we lost. I don't know how many rooms there are that are going to have the AV equipment, but um, you know, well, it's quite a the few. Same, it's it's just less, so it's. It's just smaller. You still have to put up four walls in a room. You still have to put floor, ceiling, light sockets. And put the AV equipment in that room. It's like... So that, in that sense, there isn't a big you know, difference. And, and I get that, but, you know, when you're talking about audiovisual uh, equipment and low voltage wiring and stuff like that, the smaller the space that you're wiring, the less cost you have, the less speakers you need for your sound systems, the smaller monitors, screens, projectors, et cetera, et cetera. So there, there should have been some savings, and it doesn't look like that happened at all. Yeah, it sounds like they just kind of booted the, yeah, yeah the estimate, not, not you, maybe, but whoever was helping with the estimating in the first place, that probably wasn't the right answer on the AV. I mean, there should have been some amount of work put into it. You know, and I think we're paying for it now. I completely agree with the rapid change in technology. You know, computers we paid four thousand dollars for three and a half years ago only cost nine hundred today. You know, the, the cost has been coming down, so it's kind of unfortunate that on the AV side it looks like it went way in the other direction. You know? So, what's our contingency balance right now? Seven hundred thousand dollars. Well, yeah, that's the ballpark. Our balance right now is total is four hundred sixty three nine seventy eighty five, and that would include this number. Meaning after. Yeah. Well, after, if, if we if were to we approve this it, tonight, we'd, we'd still, still have four hundred sixty-four thousand dollars remaining in our balance. And then minus another hundred thousand because we're going to be over on FF and E, right? And by the time the project's done, or is that already factored into here? 
I believe that is factored that's into here. Because we increased the budget mm -hmm. to include that. Um, yeah, I can keep I can keep making arguments for this, but I don't know if we want to make a just uh, make a motion to approve this. Um, you know, I mean, we do have to recognize seniors. Nearly thirty percent of our population using this building. You know, I don't want to throw the schools under the bus, but that's seven percent of our population using schools. <laughs> And, you know, we spend a lot of money there as well. I think this is a fair number f to provide audiovisual IT for the senior center in the scope of the whole thing. Well, my thing is, is if they, if they have the money, they're not coming back for any more. So if this is where the money's going uh, for contingencies, then um, it should be done now while the walls aren't done and you can put the uh, electrical and everything that you need in now and not think about having to do it later on. Yeah, this so, is going to this is going to be in that building yeah. for 30 so, years. So that's my thing is I don't want to see we made mistakes in the school and things like that with not putting enough uh, fiber optic and things like that that to run so I think you know we should uh, certainly look at at uh, at this and let it let it be. Yeah, I don't disagree that it needs to be done now. I just think either the scope is way off or the projections that we started with were just ridiculous because, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, if the, if the bids were wildly different, right. you know, I don't know, relying on what they're saying in terms of the yeah, nature of what they wanted to yeah. yeah, there, you know, there's like a clo pretty close gap, top three, I would say, and then the, the latter two are, you know, mm -hmm. higher. Which I think is pretty normal when you're looking at bids. So. And I know we still have to get from here to April, but we're getting closer and closer. So, is anybody worried about any of these other line items right now? I mean, again, you don't have a crystal ball. Something could pop up, but there's nothing. No, it's all going really good. It's all less things underground showing up every day. <laughs> <laughs> I think the underground is all set. Yeah, that's. God. Uh, I mean, there is one that I'm asked that we're getting some more detail on, which had to do with um, no work and shelving and blocking and different things. Line number 29 on that sheet, if you're looking. Mm -hmm. um, but I want more detail on that before bringing that to the whole board for well, approval. Well, Phil doesn't have the exact number on that. And we don't have the exact it's, number yet. What on that. that is is Suzanne and I requested when looking at the plans with the architects that they had um, areas that had shelving built in, but only up to five feet. Mm -hmm. And we said, we're always going to be short of storage. We want them to go all the way. So that's just modifying those things. And luckily, we have a lot of closets. We can put a lot of storage in. So. Yeah. And I just want more detail on that before we, we bring that to the whole board for approval. But that's, you know, that's the one other thing that's out there that has a sticker shock value to it, <laughs> and so I want to raise that. that. It's roughly thirty-three thousand, and my that number of four hundred sixty-four thousand dollars remaining in the balance. That number is in there right now, so. So was was your were you making a motion before I, to approve? Sure. <laughs> I can make a motion to approve. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a grudging second. <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 A grudging aye. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a, a thing with putting up higher shelving. I'm not exactly sure if I want elders up on a ladder. So well, we're going to make our staff do it. Uh, <laughs> and have them fall. Yeah. Oh, let me tell you about people falling off ladders. <laughs> That's my field. <laughs> yeah. How's your wrists and your shoulders? <laughs> okay. So we're still supposed to do sewer? Yeah, so we can, let's do, uh, so thank you very much all for coming. So sewer rates.
Again. Um, so it's not again. We're not we're not voting on sewer rates tonight. Thank God. I, I just wanted to put this on the speech <laughs> ready for you. Oh no, hey, you can have your speech, John, still. No, but I wanted to put this on the agenda to talk about what our plan is moving forward with sewer rates and if we want to it's a real shitty deal here. Yeah, yeah. If we want to, to have a, basically, I would like to have a vote tonight if we want to have a sewer rate hearing. Um, because no. because out of town meeting, we, you know, I don't see anything after town meeting providing a good path to reducing, to, to kind of getting sewer in a good financial position. Um, you know, all the things with free cash and all this other stuff that we had um, this year, not getting to uh, pull all the money in. We collected $932,000 from, from sources for sewer rates this year, except impact. In order to balance the budget, we transferred $227,000 from sewer reserves to the budget to make up for the lack of free cash. We don't know yet, but we probably have $140,000 to put back into reserves after free cash is certified, mm -hmm. which gives us a deficit of around $90,000 this year. So, or, I'm sorry, which gives us about, wait, do I have that number right? It's a cushion. A cushion of $90,000 left. So we're, we're basically, bleeding our reserves account by $100,000 a year to keep the budget afloat. And, you know, we theoretically have a couple years of that remaining until the reserves are run dry. Now, I don't have all these figures worked out exactly or here, but that's a, a rough number, and I just feel like we need to determine <coughs> what we want to do next and consider raising the rates because we need to do something eventually I know John's speech is going to be about administrative charges, which that's one point. I, I know that's one thing, and I do I do want to address that. The other, and the other most with the important, financial important management point team. is yeah. when this DPW was created. Mm -hmm. Everything just went top of the line, one third, one third, one third, which is still not correct. So the DPW director, I know we've been through a bunch of them so far, but maybe this guy can figure out whether truly our one-third is paying and offsetting the highway department. Yeah. Is the water department offsetting the highway department? We have, you know, everything's one-third across the board. And I've seen bills come across the desk that we're paying for tires on a loader that the sewer department never uses for thousands of dollars, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. That stuff should have been put into snow budget and it should have been addressed at that point that way. Not one third, one third, one third. I think we have a real problem with managing our money. Well, then you have okay. to factor in the personnel costs too, <coughs> and where time gets spent. Yeah. We volunteer to have a salary cut. <laughs> First thing. <laughs> I, I know, but I, so so all joking aside, <laughs> we got to figure out our path forward. So, so what is our path forward going to be with this? Because we don't want to, you know, we don't want to wait too long before we can do something. So what is our next deadline for a rate increase in order to hit the next bill? Do you know? Um, you have now, well, unless you vote tonight, <laughs> you have missed, um, the May 1st billing. Okay. So by May 15th, uh, sorry, by March 15th, you would need to vote in order not to miss the August 1st billing. So it's a six month lag, okay. essentially. Six months. Okay. So what I would recommend is to, just from my perspective, we're working on water and sewer regionalization possibilities yeah. mm -hmm. um, we need a little bit more time because we're not there yet where we could talk about cost savings or, or other issues and yet we're still working out some of the administrative stuff with these other towns um, 
maybe February time frame for a hearing possibly that would give us, I guess, some more options as far as to work things out in time to, if we want to do an increase, hit that March 15th deadline? Yeah, I'm hoping definitely by that point, I hope to have the administrative charge formula um, ironed out and that clear. So that's one aspect of this. Um, and I just don't know on, you know, Chris, with the with one third, one third, is there anything we can do there to talk about that or address that? Um, I, know. I don't want to put you on the spot. You don't have to answer. You no. can say, let's, let's consider Chairman, this. Yeah. Chairman, the, the one third, one third, one third is a simplistic argument. Yeah. Um, yes, there are a couple. That is why we, it's not only hardly, but that's why we have a uniform department as in DPW. Mm -hmm. There are, there are, sometimes within this fiscal year where various equipment are, are charged one third, one third for, for to the other, all the divisions. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't necessarily mean that that division might have used it the same way with the other divisions at a particular time. For example, the issue of the loader. This period we are in right now, most of the charges for the loaders, the trucks, have been put into snow and ice because we are preparing for the snow season. So that has doesn't go into the any of the divisions. It goes to snow and ice budget. Mm -hmm. But outside the snow budget, we have equipment that we all use. Uh, some of them may not be used, may be used more by highway. As, but the utility divisions are always in that mode that they should not be, highway should not use, or building department should not use the equipment. But we, I, my, I keep educating them that it's no longer the old school, it's a department of public works. And so most of the administrative cost goes to one third, one third, and that includes myself and the field, the field superintendent, which, and that's one of the best ways to argument uh, to be able to get the cost right. Mm -hmm. So, but I try, I try to understand what it's about. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not a uniform or a frequent occurrence. Mm -hmm. We also don't have a way to measure uh, because sewer paid one third, then sewer must use it at a uh, so amount of time to or because highway paid one third. So, if there's anything, Mr. Chairman, it's a positive thing that we're able to be a unit so that uh, the greater good is for the town, as opposed to the general fund where uh, many things we may not be able to meet up at a particular time because of general funds. Mm -hmm. And that will put our services or what we're supposed to do much, much better. So. Okay. And another thing that this feeds into just on our agenda here is our fiscal year 2021 planning. And I think it's the year for DPW, correct? Yes. 2021. So maybe these are some of the things we can just think about when we're looking at that. You know, if we can make any changes this year. I don't That's know. what I'm saying. Before yeah. the DPW, before it was combined and before mm -hmm. it was set up the way it was, uh, a lot of it came out of taxation and was funded through the highway department. Yeah. When, when we needed a piece of equipment, when you needed another dump truck, when you needed another small truck, mm -hmm. when you needed a new backhoe or, or excavator. Yeah. You know, and they were to one point where they were charged by the hour to the water department or the sewer department as they used it. Mm -hmm. But when you're buying a piece of equipment and you're splitting it three ways, it's a, it's a major hit to these departments that are self-sufficient. So you know, supposedly, mm -hmm. and, and it's really hard to budget for it. And I, I just think that that the water and the sewer offset in the highway, where it, the highway was coming out of taxation. That's mm -hmm. why I keep saying the capital out of the water and the capital out of the wastewater should still be coming out of the taxation. That, that's the point I'm trying to make. That, that, <coughs> A lot of times it's getting ignored or just not understood, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, nobody talked about that. You know, when, when we built the water filtration plant, mm -hmm. most of that money came came out of taxation, not out of the, the grant and the, the money to build the building was through taxation, not through 
water recedes. Okay. Well, so let's, well, we can move, we can move into fiscal year 2021 planning, but for, to close out sewer, I think, let's look at revisiting this in February. Absolutely. Yeah. And really try to come up with where we're at and then we can have a hearing before March 15th. Can we do this later in February, second half of February, if we're doing that, just to kind of give us as much time as possible sure. to work on details? So. Yeah, and I don't want to put any pressure on the regionalization approach. It's more just what do we need to do this coming year? Yeah. I mean, the, yeah. And the only reason that I, I want to wait until we have more information is because that will give us a, a solid answer whether we're going to have to have massive increases or there's some other path that we can take to avoid the massive increase. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. You know, in sewer, you're not only looking at, at just budget number here right now, you're, you're looking at an expansion of the whole sewer system, the whole sewer plant, mm -hmm. you know, if if we can't regionalize. Yeah. And I don't think you want to hear that number tonight. Yeah, no, no. Let's not mention that right now. Well, there's no funding there. School. And then, and then, yeah. it, and then when we it, have when the, it was upgraded in '88. I think 80 percent of it was paid by the federal government. You know, they had, they had grant programs yeah. out there in '88. Yeah. yeah. Not anymore. No, there's not not much state money out there either. Right? Yeah. You're on your okay. Own. So let's go to our fiscal year 2021 planning. So, planning for our next fiscal year. What are budget priorities and those kind of things are going to be is what I was envisioning with this. You know, we know we have a DPW focus, mm -hmm. but are there other things in town as well that we're thinking of for priorities? Planner. Uh, planner is one. I think, you know, with the new buildings coming on staff, what are we doing to maintain these buildings, clean these buildings, um, night access, all those issues are going to be something that we haven't been faced with really before as much as we are now. We have three new buildings coming online and only one going off, <laughs> offline. So the, the, that, that last part was something yeah. we talked about in the department meeting. We have buildings that are going to be completed this spring and summer. Um, so. Uh, the senior center will be expecting to open and have the ribbon cutting and having programs. At the same time, the library will be an active construction site. So mm -hmm. uh, as the building committees to start coordinating and thinking about how do you operationalize these buildings as quickly as possible uh, or as efficiently as possible. And the other thing is uh, a, lot, a lot of departments are going to have to coordinate their budgets in order to make sure that we have programs, capital, operations, and, um, and construction completed. So there's uh, DPW is going to be involved, senior center, uh, the 100 level budgets, um, the library. Uh, they're all going to have to coordinate their budgets in order to make sure that these buildings are up and going and the programs that they're offering are going to be in place. Just as something to keep in mind, um, with the new buildings, especially once all of them come online. Uh, Gary can't do it all by himself. As oh, yeah. Far as, and uh, the past practice of saying, well, it's a new building. We don't have to touch it for 10 years and wait until the ceilings start falling <laughs> it's down. Out. Yeah. Oh, and, so well. <laughs> yeah. And, and then panicking and trying to find money. I mean, we're going to have to, I mean, Gary was moved to the building maintenance foreman, but he doesn't have anybody working under him. Mm -hmm. So that's something to think about just for the DPW budgeting priorities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then um, totally lost what I was going to say. <laughs> sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, 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 no. It was along those lines. Uh, yeah. Just, just figuring that out. So, yeah. So, Ashley's uh, pendant budget uh, departments to have a meeting on like the twentieth of not the twentieth of December, Wednesday, twelfth of December, in order to formulate a draft uh, budget so that we can start looking at the coordination of these building projects. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, because the Senior Center Building Committee very strongly encourages the select board to plan ahead and not let our building become obsolete. Mm -hmm. okay. Take what it I, while it's easy to take care of and take care of it. Yeah. Don't wait. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. And that's mm -hmm. what I was going to say is, you know, create. do we want to do anything where we create 
a real maintenance budget where we're allocating funds for each one of these buildings because that right now isn't in the building isn't in the plan altogether so and that's something the municipal building committee brought forward we had yeah. started the conversation with the previous dpw director as to whether or not it made sense to create a centralized um, yeah, that was on the sewer instead of one third, one third, one, one third. Now we can go quarter. one quarter. <laughs> there we go. There's there a new department. We got John's vote to create this new department. <laughs> See, I'm tired. I'm still thinking. Yeah. 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 Mr. Chairman, yeah. it's one of the things that I will come back to the board. Mm. If you recall, when we created the, the building and cemetery division, I, I requested for a label and the board because of budget and also the short time frame mm -hmm. the board opts for us to go out for a one-year contract so and so we we're coming back to the board and now that uh, also with these buildings and because of the new buildings we also some of the items in the buildings will still be under warranty we also need people to make sure that those warranties are kept so there will be some probably period of training. So as we get into the point where, for example, the Kazan Agent Building is being turned over to the, to the board, we will be talking with the OPM. And so I would like to get all the information they have right now. Mm -hmm. so, so those are the things that will come before the board. The issue of buildings and grounds will be where the maintenance will be, in my recommendation. Plus, S these new buildings, we also, the board is talking about access. It's just like you, my recommendation for the town hall will be requiring that the new buildings have, will be able to have um, a good pro a system to come in and, 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 and go in mm -hmm. and go out. And some, probably some also, have been requested to the board as time goes on. So the various committees, chairs, has to come up with some more responsibility so that they can also be responsible to make sure that who comes in for their meeting and when they're leaving it, so that uh, yeah. those kind of things. So I will be able to monitor them with the electronic file yeah. system. Yeah. What is the the senior center? How, is the, how are the locks working for that? Do you remember? Uh, can, we have the main dining room, which can be yeah. isolated from the rest of the building. And that's accessible by a... It is a key lock. It is a key lock, okay. okay. One of the things, Mr. Chairman, the key is good, but in today's climate, because of multi-use... Oh, yeah, yeah, I agree. It would be better to us to come up with a better system where we can monitor who, who was the last who came in, and also not everybody who comes in should have the key, mm -hmm. provided we have good schedule. And every group or entity that is approved to come in, in this case, for example, committees, the uh, the committee chairs will be responsible to make sure that uh, things are done properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, based yeah. on the key I was given for town hall, yeah. I think it might have been from 1659. <laughs> 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 you must have got mine. Once we have a system it, that works, we don't change. Yeah. <laughs> you get used to it. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the fire chief, when he put the fire system and the security system and the sewer department and the highway Correct. department, yes. it, it's a good system. Correct. Everybody knows their That's own That's what we're number. putting in yes. there, Hadley. You know yeah. who's in and out. Correct. Mm -hmm. Each person is responsible for themselves and yep. their own number. Mm -hmm. right. And That's, it's a computerized system, and it can be yeah. changed. Right. Yes. <coughs> yes. We will address that. Yeah. At least for the main room that yes. people might want to access. Yeah, it can right. be good. Exactly. Yeah. Public access. Yeah, because you can always give different people. You, you could each have a different code to get in that would work, and all of a sudden we don't want Joyce in there anymore. We cut her code. Code. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Joyce. Yeah. Out again. <laughs> At least they want to keep me where I'm working. That's a help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you're gonna be a senior. We're gonna let you in. Oh. Also, Mr. Chairman, I, I assume, am a senior. <laughs> I hate to tell I you. This, this new buildings, the there will also be cameras. Mm -hmm. Will be good to especially because the public bill. Yeah. Yeah. Are there cameras on the senior side? Yeah, there are. Okay. Yeah. Totally cameras inside yeah. and outside. Great. Anything else we want to discuss with the uh, fiscal 
2021? I think uh, 2021 will be moving into, already have had a second year of ambulance. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's time to still keep on the radar uh, doing our own ambulance service at some point. Or regionalizing. Or regionalizing. We're, I mean, we need to still look further into this. We're, we're doing well with it. Um, even if we were to have a basic ambulance, because you can't just jump into an ALS um, um, ambulance. Yeah. Um, you have to go basic first. That's a whole year process before that um, can even move forward with another, with the other step. So um, I'd still like to keep that on the radar too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Good. Okay. Uh, Special town, Special town meeting follow up, even though we touched on a couple of things. Well, let's not get, we're going into 8.30 here. I know, yeah. To executive session. Yeah, we'll, we'll wrap it up. Anything, so the main highlight. Do we have to set the date for? Yeah, so the main, the main yeah, thing let's is do that. we have six ballot questions. Um, and uh, we need to set the ballot uh, date. There are two dates that, um, that uh, uh, we'll work for Jessica's office. One is December 19th, get it done quickly. Or the other one is January 7th. I say December 19th, let's 19th. just get it done. Yeah, I, know, I think that's good. The sooner the better, don't know what the weather is. Make a motion. Yeah. Make, Make a motion. motion. <laughs> go ahead. Make a motion that we hold our election December 19th for the uh, Prop 2 and a half. Okay, we've got Second. Some, something for you all to sign down. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's just Christian. Oh, all right, yeah. hey. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's revisit this later, uh, town meeting follow-up, unless there's anything critical anyone wants to say right now. No, I just want the money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Okay, let's just do that for now. Um... Let's do our Had We Tree Day proclamation. I can quickly read that. Let's open it here. Just hand it to me. So, in observance of Had We Tree Day on November 16th, 2019, and a Tree City USA qualification event, whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees and whereas this holiday called Arbor Days was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska and whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce life-giving oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife and whereas trees in our town increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community. And now, therefore, we the select board of the town of Hadley, Massachusetts, on behalf of the inhabitants, declare that November 16th, 2019, be known as Hadley Tree Day. Given this 13th day of November in the year of 2019, signed by the board, we have the ceremony taking place on November 16th in the common at what time? Do we know? Is it 2 p.m.? Okay. So that's this Saturday at 2 o'clock. Is anyone from the select board planning on being there? Uh, yes. Yeah. You guys both? Great. I have a slew of soccer games to go to, otherwise I would be there. Um, hopefully it's warmer for all of us. Yeah, hopefully you can put a shovel in the ground. <laughs> Well, thank you for doing this, and I, I can't wait to see the tree that's planted there. Um, it'll be exciting. Is, is there a motion? So is there a motion? A motion to approve. All, all those in favor? So, aye. 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 <laughs> Any other uh, comments on that? Or? No. Good. Okay. Move on. So, got that. Uh, town administrator report, David. Would you like okay, to go through so quickly? not a whole lot has happened between Thursday town meeting and uh, yeah. the long weekend and today, but we did have that uh, department head meeting today. We did talk about coordinating the budgets across uh, divisions in order to accomplish uh, the goals that we talked about. The other thing that we talked about was uh, the future use of Goodwin Memorial Library building itself. Um, 
and that there are renovations that are required, which we hope to approach CPA to uh, get funding for, specifically the knob and tube wiring, the loose ceiling, and the uh, making at least one uh, unisex bathroom uh, accessible on the main floor. Um, there'll have to be some sort of formal vote between the trustees and the select board to transfer care and custody of the building over to the select board. And the select board will have to think about future uses of that building. Um, other than that, it's been a long weekend and uh, we sailed down the river. I can tell you all about it. <laughs> <laughs> don't we have, Thank you, David. Don't we have ownership of that building anyway? It comes under our purview? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so but the, well, the peculiarity of the law is that they have to vote formally to transfer care and custody, not ownership, <laughs> but care and custody over to you. Oh, the, the trustees? The trustees, the trustees of the library. Yeah. Um, okay. Do you have to do the reverse with the new building? Give care and custody. <laughs> yeah. That's it's true. Yeah, I don't know. That is a good question. You might think about that. I have yeah. to look into that. I mean, if they want to pay to keep or to remodel it. That's right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to mention we had on our agenda number 5.6 West Street, Route 9, school transportation parking concerns. We're going to skip over that this meeting and, and address that at a future date after we get out there. Um, other, I was. Just hoping maybe, David, you could give everyone a quick Nixle refresher and just with um, the bad weather coming and if a, if a building's closed or something along those lines, is it, you know, are there any special Nixle um, so, things you should sign up for? Yeah. Um, the easiest way is to text Hadley to 888777, so 888-777, just text Hadley. It'll reply back with keywords, and you can sign up for as many of those keywords as you would like. But if uh, if you don't add any of those keywords, like Hadley DPW or uh, what's the one for Town Hall, Hadley Gov, yes, um, you're only going to get the real critical emergencies from the police, the fire chief. Okay. If you want informational stuff, you have to opt in. So okay. We don't bombard you with with, with text messages. So how can you text somebody when they're not in your phone? How can you text? Uh, you, I'll show you. You just text the number. She's, yeah, already, yeah. she's already registered. Yeah, you just add. I am. Type yeah, I did, I did your phone. <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah, all set. Perfect. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. I just wanted to give everyone that refresher with the winter coming on and possibly the senior center could be closed and or seniors can town sign hall up or... for that service at the senior center. Okay. There. Yeah. Uh, technology challenge. Okay, okay, sounds and good. And Hadley Media and I are working on a instructional video uh, this week. Okay. So it'll be on Hadley Media soon. We'll just get the word out as much as we can. Thank you. And that is everything. No, for... it's not. We need to talk oh, about announcements. future meetings. Future, future meetings? Future meetings. Okay. So what's the schedule? Oh, the schedule. So we're not going to throw in any extras, are we? Okay. Coming to the end of the year here. I have one next week, the 20th. <laughs> you do. I'm so glad you do. I have one. <laughs> have fun. <laughs> December 4th. One Thanksgiving Eve. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, you just got luck. Nobody else uh, <laughs> One, 12, 12, well, 11, 20, 12, 4, 12, 18. Why three in December? Uh, there's just two. No, he's, he's got the 4th and the 18th. 4th so. and the 18th. I'd like you to switch that. Do you want to switch it? I do. Okay. Like that works for I'd me. I'd like to go the first two. First. The 4th and the 11th? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that, because there's a Legion dinner that night on the 11th, on the 18th rather. 12-4, Does that work all right for you? For me? Mm -hmm. that's, that's fine. We can do that. Oh, I had another meeting scheduled that night, and I'll have to reschedule. That's okay. okay. For you, Joyce, I'll do it. Well, you're so kind. <laughs> I wouldn't be here on the 18th. <laughs> we are meeting on the 20th. I appreciate that. We are meeting on the 20th, okay. yeah. Um, and then the first of the year, I don't have any in there right now. That's okay. We can do these so. two. What I've got for you is January 8th. January 15th. 
And then that's Friday is the MMA conference? Uh, that would be the 23rd, or the 24th, rather. Oh, not the 17th? Not the 17th. It's okay. About, it's a week like this year. Did I do that? Because I put it in my calendar. First, you, when when would you guys like to do schedule the rest of uh, the in winter January. in January? In January. January. Okay, yeah. let's do it then. Okay. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Any announcements? I think I have a couple. Um, we have the Cross Country Hopkins Academy team qualified for the state tournament, and that would be John Hanscom from the boys um, team. And for the first time, Hopkins Academy girls um, ever to score in Western Mass meet. So congratulations to them and to Jeff Mish, their coach. He's worked hard over the last couple of years. Uh, forming this team is relatively new to um, our school, and uh, they're doing a great job. Uh, we have um, the passing of John Bonosch. Um, uh, condolences to his family and to his partner, Irene. Um, John marched uh, many a year with me in the uh, Hadley Memorial Day Parade. He was a, a veteran and, um, you know, he enjoyed doing that. So condolences to his family. And then we had Cynthia Payne. Uh, didn't personally know her, but she is related to the uh, Hadley and the Koinzik family. And condolences to them on her passing. Okay. That's all I have. Anyone else? motion to go into executive session. All right. Thank you. Um, as chair of the Hadley Select Board, I state that the board has moved and seconded. Oh, I didn't hear a second. She motioned to you move into. You have to say why we're going into executive oh. session. Uh, the Select Board will enter into executive session as per the provisions of MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21A, 2 to conduct contract negotiations with non-union personnel. Okay. And, and tax collector. And tax collector. And to conduct contract negotiations. I did say contract negotiations. Union contract negotiations. Yes. Yeah. Dispatch. Dispatch.